All right, so we've created this bar plot. We're getting a little bit more familiar with this data set, uh, but not everything needs to be a visualization. So what can we learn about this data set just by uh, the various functions that are available to you in R? So let's just take a look and explore around, right? All right, so let's click into our data set here and just take a look and see maybe what we might be curious about. Uh, you know, I might be curious, what is the... Let's see, what are we curious about? What is the average dis display, I don't know what this is, displacement? I have no idea, I'm not a car person. But let's see, let's see what it is. Okay, so one way we can extract all the pieces of data from a single row in R is to type out the data set name, which is gonna be MPG, and you can use this operator, this dollar sign, it, this just gives you a specific column, right? So if we were interested in the column displacement, then we could type it like this. Now if we run this, we're going to get a vector of numbers. This is just simply the column itself. Uh, another way we could get the exact same information is we can type the data frame name and create this bracket system. So the bracket system is basically going to be separating the rows from the columns. Uh, this is actually usually my preferred method to do things because in this first half of this bracket, you're defining the rows that you're interested in. And in the second part, you, you define the columns you're interested in, in quotes. So in this case, we're interested in the, the dispel column. And so if we run this, these two lines do the exact same thing. So we'll see we'll see this returned here right and another thing so to prove the row thing we could say like return me the first two rows of the dis dispel column and so our expectation if we look at this is it would be 1.8 1.8 and heck why don't we make it uh, 1 through 3 so we can grab this 2 as well so if we say that we should expect 1.8 1.8 and 2 and that's exactly what we get. So you can see how that system works. Very useful. I use it all the time. And you'll use it all the time as well. And again, you'll see we use this uh, sequence system here, right? To return one through three. All right. So that's really helpful. Now, that's not particularly interesting on its own. But it might be interesting to see what the average is by, I don't know, how about by class? Okay, so we could do this using the aggregate function. And there's, there's multiple ways to do this, but the basic one is to use the aggregate function, which comes with the, with the stats library. And, and you'll, you'll have that installed by default. So let's take a look at what this does, okay? Compute summary statistics of data subsets. So it splits the data into subsets, computes summary statistics for each, and returns the results in a convenient format. So think of this like a pivot table, if you're familiar with Excel, right? It's, if you wanted to sum by a group, you would create a pivot table, okay? And that's fairly annoying to use in Excel, but it's gonna be super easy to do in R. So this is one of, the, one of the greatest features in R, if you're an Excel user, to stop using Excel and use this instead for your pivot table needs, okay? So let's take a look at the examples and see if there's one in here that will guide us to doing the right thing here. Right, because what we're going to do is we want to sum, or we want to take the average uh, by group in these different areas. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works. So we can define which which data set we're using. Okay, so if we use this function, we say our data is going to be MPG, and what are we interested in? We want to look at the class and the display. Okay. Okay, I did a little bit of cleanup here. And now let's take a look. How do we want to do this? So if we're interesting in the average dispel by class, we can use the aggregate function this way. So we say aggregate. And then we type in the column that we're interested in summarizing. 
by which group and then we need to say which data set we're using. In fact, it probably would be better to put this at the beginning. So we can say data MPG. We want to summarize display by class. And then to say we want the mean, we type in all caps fun, which stands for function. And we're going to use the mean function. Okay. So now when we run this, we're going to get this summary down here. So this is our average here. And we can change this too, right? We can say sum, which is kind of a pointless metric, but just to show you can do it. And you can create functions too, and it will it will run those functions on this on this data set. So that's a pretty cool way to check out our data using the aggregate function. But before we move on from that, there's a another approach to this same problem using a popular package called dplyr. So let's install that and let's actually use it here, okay? So it's dplyr. Install. Now there's some features here that are really kind of neat and it's going to get us the same results but it might even do it in a more intuitive way, okay? So if you can get used to this framework for dplyr, which we can add to the top here, Okay, we want to load up this dplyr. We need to actually run it, right? So type it up there and then hit control enter. And that's going to load it into here. And now what we want to do is to start using this piping feature that's provided by the dplyr, okay? So you, you don't, you're not going to get this in other packages, but oh, we're still installing here, okay? So what is a pipe, okay? A pipe gives us a little way to, to apply these uh, different groupings to a data set okay so this is a pipe here and the first thing we want to do is we want to group by okay and what are we grouping by right we are grouping by class again so we can say group by class now this should just run right but it's not going to do anything all it's doing is creating a layer on this data for us and we don't need to deal with that right now, but we also want to create one more pipe. And this is going to be our summarize pipe. So we want to summarize this display and actually we, we want to name this, right? So maybe we'll say mean display equals mean Okay, so what is this going to return to us if we highlight all these rows and run this chunk? What did it do for us? Okay, we'll see what it did is it was very similar to what we had before. Uh, but perhaps in a more intuitive way, right? Because we've explicitly said group by and then we've also explicitly said how we want to summarize it. Uh, the other thing that is useful about this is we actually get these names in here too, right? We were able to define what this is. So I could have changed this to, you know, I could change this to maybe be more obvious and just call it mean. And maybe, okay, class should be the same. Or perhaps I could put this in quotes and say mean display. And this is going to maybe be a little bit clean, right? So we have our class, which is just a name. And then we also have this column, which we've named. And then the results here. So I like this approach pretty well because you just give it your data table. You say you're going to group by a certain thing. And then you just do what you want to do, which in this case, we want to create a mean for our, our display. And that's it. I think that's really good. We're going to try to use this package often for a lot of the things that we do. And we're also going to be using ggplot as a lot as well. So you already get a lot of exposure to the things we like to use. And in the next video, we'll be adding to this knowledge. All right. So I'll see you then.